Well, the DNC kicked off yesterday, continues tonight. I was playing you some highlights uh, earlier in the show. I'll be playing you some again after my next guest, Victoria Churchill's back on. She's been hanging out with the New York Post and their swing state team. And uh, from someone who is watching this for a living right now, what did you think of day one of the DNC, Victoria? Well, look, I mean, I think the contrast between the Republican and the Democrat Party is loud and clear with what we've been seeing from the DNC. You know, on one hand, they tell us they don't want a wall on our southern border. And then uh, the threat of pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel protesters was so large that they erected a wall outside of their own convention to keep themselves safe from, you know, people uh, in our in their state. Uh, that were activists that are allegedly supposed to be on their side. They're so scared of them, they put up a wall to block them from accessing the convention. Well, look, that's a fun piece of hypocrisy. Listen, but this this is something that happens um, in every cycle. So I would just like to be fair here. Something that happened at the RNC that was kind of an eye roll. It's like Republicans believe in guns, but they made their convention a gun-free zone. So uh, if they don't want to stand up on their principles, it just shows the hypocrisy right there. And pri- th- these little events are not the same as like a national public policy. And while what you're pointing out is is a cute little piece of irony, it, I mean it's just sort of superficial. Well, you know, I, I think again, as you pointed out, it it is ironic, and uh, I. I actually talked to, to some folks about the gun free zones at the RNC and uh, actually gun owners in the state actually fought back against some of the local elected in Milwaukee specifically who wanted to actually expand the gun free perimeter outside of the direct neighborhoods of the RNC and actually gun owners in that state actually fought back and were like, no, actually we believe guns in the right hands make our community safer. And so even though they, they won't be able to be brought in, you know, they weren't at the time of the RNC being able to be brought in within the perimeter you know, well sure and look away. they're also look they, yeah. they they put up a wall to ensure security and and to control the flow of humanity across their border and then they also check for ids to make sure that people who weren't supposed to be in there weren't in there so there's there's a couple of uh, funny pieces of irony, but you know what? I'm far more concerned about the the price controls. I'm more concerned about the bread lines. I'm more concerned about them putting in place policies that'll make us have to break into the Fort Worth Zoo and uh, eat a wildebeest. Well, you know, you're completely right. There was a, a line that we were using at the Post this weekend uh, that was, you know, Kamala Harris's campaign had more pronouns than policies on their website. Uh, and I think they really still do. They're really unveiling their policy agenda at the DNC. Um, you know, one of the other little bits of irony was that their policy platform was approved with at least five mentions of a uh, Biden second. Term. Oh, man, I forgot to mention that the whole show. Here I am in the third hour of the show. Yeah, they finally released the platform and whoever copied and pasted from Biden's team left, you know, in Biden's second term. It was in there five times. So and look, the important part of that, Victoria, isn't the fact that, you know, some intern boo booed in their copy and paste cleanup. Uh, it's the fact that there isn't really a platform from Kamala Harris. She is just the latest hand to go into the inside of the sock puppet that is being controlled by someone else. Oh, I mean, you're absolutely right on that. And look, the Republicans have been trying to paint this as Biden's second term. They're trying to tie Kamala Harris as much as they can to you know what they perceive to be the failures of the Biden administration. And, uh, you know, what better way to do that when the DNC parrots the own Republican and conservative talking points saying she doesn't have her own right. original ideas. She just does whatever the party hands her. This platform was literally handed to her by the party to the point that they did not even bother editing it. Right. To, so so know, the, the these glaring mistakes. Right. So the criticism that it would this would just be Biden's second term. There's no way you can argue against that. Now, you literally copied and pasted the platform. Absolutely. You're 100 percent right on that. Love it. All right. Well, as someone who's watching swing states for the New York Post, you know, the the polls, they got a little bit of a goose uh, when Kamala became the presumed nominee, a little bit of a boost when Walls was named as her running mate. Uh, are we getting a little bit of a boost from the convention? 
Well, again, and I think I've mentioned this on your show before, the Trump campaign predicted this. Everybody in the mainstream media is going to have all eyes on Kamala Harris. And actually in the swing states is where Trump and Vance are this week. I was in Philadelphia uh, the other day when Vance was up there yesterday morning, Monday morning. Um, You know, Trump was in Pennsylvania and Wilkes-Barre over the weekend, as well as York yesterday. They're going to be in uh, North Carolina, both of them, tomorrow, where I'll be covering them as well. And some of my other colleagues across the country are going to be covering them in, uh, you know, Arizona and Nevada. So the Trump team, Trump and Vance, and actually some of his allies and surrogates are speaking in locations like actually Chicago. Um, You know, they're taking their message, which is actually full of policy, unlike the Harris message has been since she got the nomination, they are taking it to these swing states while the Democrats are just talking to the media at the DNC. Well, it's also, uh, you know, the, when you said more pr- uh, pronouns than policy in her in her platform, when she came out with part of her platform and it was price controls and communism, people were like, hey, you want to just tell me more about them pronouns for a minute? I, I, was, I was liking that conversation a little bit better than this economic stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. I was actually fortunate enough to be one of three co-authors on our uh, front page story on Saturday where, uh, you know, I was kind of covering it live from the rally in Raleigh last week where she announced the plan and a couple of my colleagues talked to leading economists from kind of all breadths of conservative politics. You know, some were libertarian, some more kind of hardcore conservative, some more even nationalist conservative And nobody who has any real understanding of economic policy likes anything about these Kamala Harris proposals. Our uh, headline on Saturday was actually, you know, communism, spelled with a K as Kamala Harris's name, and a picture of her on the front page. You know, that was our cover. I saw that, yeah, K-A-M, communism. That was good stuff. Exactly. All right, well, thank you very much. Our headline there was a $1.7 trillion economic plan that includes government price control, so absolutely ridiculous. Oh, no, she said uh, on the campaign trail yesterday, that'll all pay for itself. Your return on investment, sure it will. All right, Victoria Churchill, find her work at the New York Post. Thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you. Talk to you soon.